A very big welcome back to Budapest and to this 2022 Budapest Judo Grand Slam. This beautiful city is unique, I can tell you that now, with hilly Buda connected to, uh, well, relatively flat Pest, hence the name Budapest. Its beauty captivates a perfect setting for the Judo Grand Slam that we've just been witness to over the last three days. Now, after day two, Japan clearly ahead in the medals with five gold medals. Today we've got five more weight categories, all in the light heavies and heavyweight divisions. And to introduce the medal matches here on the last day of competition is my co-commentator, Sheldon Franco Rooks. Good afternoon, Neil, and good afternoon to everyone at home. We're gonna begin with the first of the bronze medal contest in the under 90 kilo category. Nerpel Gegeli of Hungary goes up against Becca Gviniashvili of Georgia. It'll be Nerpel in the white jadogi, Gviniashvili in blue, 134 on the world ranking list, don't worry about that too much, goes against number eight. The referee in the middle for this one is Lubomir Peter of Australia. Yeah, don't look at the world rankings, although the world rankings are important. Uh, Nerpel has come into this competition as an outsider and uh, he's really enjoying it, I'm telling you now, in front of his home crowd. This man here, is an absolute legend. Uh, got beaten in a, well, really tight semi-final match um, against Moreau of Japan, and that was an absolute belter. But he's after, yeah, it's very, very close. It really was. But uh, this man here, he's gonna be fighting way above his uh, pay grade here, and he's got the crowd behind him. What an atmosphere in here. Neil has quite often said, sometimes it's difficult when you're fighting at home well we'll see how Nerpel gets on because they've really inspired him today let's hope for his sake that they can carry him through for this bronze medal well I said as well that um, it's a big advantage having a Grand Prix or a Grand Slam on home soil you can put all your 
uh, squad people in and uh, that can be all the way up to number four in the weight category and uh, people like this ah oh, that's a good ashy was there that's a wasari straight away Gavini Ashvili he's known for that little sticky foot there but uh, wow Look at the, uh, how he hooks on to the outside of the leg there. And the, the hand movement there to drive him onto his side and then back is what it's all about. It's all about control with the hands. Over the top grip. Oh, it's all over. Oh, oh, that was huge, that was. Magnificent score there from Gavinias Vili. And uh, even the crowd appreciate that, don't they? Big round of applause, yeah. Oh, that was massive. Talk about, well, I mean, they're famous for it anyway. Some of their pickups. Big arm over the back. As soon as the arm's over the back there, well, the scooping action there to get him up into the air was uh, magnificent. This man, oh wow, he's been on great form all day. It was just the one semi-final there against a great Japanese fighter. And uh, it was, uh, well, went into golden score in the semi-final. And that's the only blip. Well, and, and it was a terrific semi-final actually. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely magnificent. But um, wow, that, what a way to start the, the uh, proceedings. There's the first one. A nice little Ashi Waza there. Takes him onto his side for a Wazari. If you go onto your side there, it's a Wazari scored. It's not quite all the way onto the back. So the hands were failing just a little bit. But look at this. Massive pick up there. He does a, a, a big scooping action there to pick his opponent up. But then what he does, he finishes it off with the uh, leg. And also he pulls and he uh, uh, pushes with the arms as well. The, the Saruti and the Kazushi hand were working overtime. The second that big arm went over, it wow. was curtains for oh, Nepal. Yes. So powerful, Becca Gviniashvili. Well, we've got a second bronze medal contest coming up now. Let's hope that it lives up to that first one. Ivan Felipe wow. Silva Morales of Cuba goes up against Rafael Machado of Brazil. It'll be Silva Morales in the white Jadogi, Machado in blue. And the referee in the middle for this one is Lorenzo Bagnoli of Italy. Like you said, uh, it's got a, a lot to live up to because uh, that was, uh, wow, what a way to start. Well, we've had a great third day of competition here. We've had uh, very interesting. Yesterday was more tactical seen more Ippons, big Ippons today, I would say. The light heavyweights and the heavyweights have uh, really been uh, putting it out there and uh, we've had some great matchups by great champions. Silver Morales in white. Machado of Brazil in blue and Machado, Silva Morales, uh, very different styles. Uh, you'll find that Morales will just keep coming forwards all the time. He doesn't know reverse. It's not on his uh, agenda. And these two probably fight each other quite a lot on the uh, Pan American circuit as well. So it's right against left. And uh, normally indicated with the left foot forward, left stance. And then you can see that Machado there is uh, right handed doesn't always work that way because a lot of the uh, fighters can, of course, throw left and right. It's uh, both sides. And sometimes they'll put the other foot forwards in order to take a right-handed grip. And then they'll change stance. So uh, that uh, it doesn't always follow suit. But um, 
Look at this. Morales attacking there with uh, Bico Soto on the outside of the leg of Machado. Six times they've gone head to head and it's 5-1 in favor of Ivan Felipe Silva Morales. Yeah, well, I, I said, didn't I? I bet a lot of it's on the, um, it won't just be on the World Tour, which is the Grand Prix Grand Slams. Three of their six have been at home. Cancun, the Pan American Championships on two occasions and both in, in, in the final. So they're, yes, they're accustomed to meeting each other. They kind of know each other, don't they? And you can tell they're just a little bit wary of each other. And more often than not, it's for a medal. <laughs> Two bronze medals to be fought. Every category, there's seven weight categories, men and women. Nice Uchimata, he's just setting up the way in there. For those out there that uh, are not familiar with the uh, judo scoring, uh, to throw them on their back is uh, a nippon, cleanly on the back. And uh, if you get them on their side, it can be a wazari score. Two of those make a nippon. 20 second hold down or arm lock or strangle for a submission. And there's a penalty system as well. We'll point that out as we go. Well, actually, I can do it point now. point it out quickly. <laughs> because two Shidos up there, two uh, yellow flags uh, to Machado. If he gets a third one, it's all over. It's on Sokomaki disqualification. Sometimes you can just go behind the pace uh, so you get out attacked and that can result in a, a Shido uh, give, being given. So you've got to attack at certain times and you've got to grip up as well. So that was uh, given to Silva Morales there for breaking grips off and not being positive. They're both looking for the Uchimata. A little over half a minute left to go. Silva Morales just beginning to edge ahead here on attacks. He picked up that Shido for breaking off the grips and has come in a couple of times since then. This is where the tactics comes in now because the one that uh, actually gets first in for the attack three or four ahead and uh, they could get the other one uh, with a third penalty and, and win by default. And I think because they know each other so well, probably what they're thinking at this moment. Four minutes for the contest and then if it goes into, if there's no score on the board, it goes into golden score. And a golden score can go, well, it can go uh, on as long as they keep on attacking. Yeah. You can see there, Macedo, oh, just a little bit lax there, wasn't he? Almost let him in. Yeah, he took his, took his eye off the action for a moment. Well, we're going to need a period of golden score to sort this one out. Yeah, so any score now, anything down. So a throw, hold down for 10 seconds will do it. Arm lock or strangle, but uh, now he's got to get that leg out for the seconds to count. And he didn't even have a go at that, did he? He wasn't interested. Normally you'd see an athlete wrap up the top half and then begin to work to try to get the leg out. Didn't give it a go. 
Yeah, it's got to be control of the opponent down. Oh, that's almost there. That's Sienaghi. <laughs> Well, that's as close as we've got. Morales is going to have to come. Silva Morales is going to have to come back now. One really more of hard. those, I think, and uh, Machado might uh, steal this. Coach getting a little warning there. Not allowed to shout um, while they're actually fighting. Not the first time. C could have continued there, couldn't he? Bit yeah, more pressure. He's, he's just not interested in the groundwork. We get a lot of... Uh, really good fighters that like standing and groundwork and they'll transition very quickly to ground. Oh, That was a poor attack, wasn't it? Doesn't yeah. need that, does he? He's going to let him get away with it. He's uh, very lucky to get away with that. Yeah, it was on the way out that he bailed, wasn't it? He'd gone in. This is looking much better for Silva Morales, isn't it? The last few exchanges... Ripping with perspiration there. Oh, and that was close and again. again. See, he's, he's got the arm and he, he doesn't even go for it. Just not interested in any near was up. Big effort here from Silva Morales. Oh, this might yeah, be this it now. It. That's, the it. Count, That's yes, definitely the other way. It. So he changes direction there, gets the hip on for that. He's already holding down, and uh, Machado says, that's it, you can let me, <laughs> let me go now. So a change of direction there, and Machado, well, he has to go over. The first time that they went head-to-head, -head, Machado won. It's now six in a row that Silva Morales has defeated Machado. He learns quickly, doesn't he, Silva Morales? <laughs> he only needed one loss. The rest of them have gone his way. Well, he had to work for that, didn't he? He Absolutely. really did. He did Just have to about work to for add it. that. Yeah, that was a hard fought. That was one for the for the diehards. Had to hang in there and wait <laughs> until we were what one and a half minutes into. Yeah, it was Golden one score. and a half minutes in. But we, neatly worked. Yeah, I've, I've got to say that we haven't seen many long golden scores. They've uh, all been kind of contested in the first minute. There was the first one, and there's the change of direction there to the Sumigeshi. He wasn't going to let that go either, was he? First one, Uchimata. Well, he did exactly what we were talking about th this morning, which was to, if you're uncertain, go into the Osai Kami, although that being in golden score it wouldn't that any no score he'd already scored like a, hadn't yeah. he it was all over but uh, he thought I'm not letting go of yeah. this don't blame him he'll have to drag <laughs> me off medalist Ivan Felipe Silva Morales the sorry first of the bronze medal winners in the under 90 kilo category we come now to the final where we will see who picks up the silver Christian Palati of Italy goes up against Morao Sanshiro of Japan it will be Palati in the white jidogi Morao in Blue, the referee in the middle for this one is Gostini Balash of Hungary. We're having a little discussion, weren't we, just uh, prior to this? I mean, Palati there comes in. He's uh, he, an unassuming former junior world champion, and uh, that was under 81 kilograms. Come up to under 90 kilograms now. He's got some really neat uh, techniques that uh, catch people by surprise. And... Uh, this man here also can come from anywhere, different angles, 
So uh, I think we're going to have a really good tactical match here. I th I'm sure it's going to go one way or the other, but uh, you know, obviously, just depends on who catches the right moment. It was difficult for us to predict, wasn't it? Yeah, Palati was unseeded this morning. Got past Sakaipov, Nemanja Maidov. Yeah, he beat some great people yeah. all the way through, didn't he? Nepal. And then Machado in the semi-final. He's got this little neat Ochi Gary. He just drops down as if he's uh, going to go onto his hands and knees. And then he just flicks the leg out and uh, over they go. Let's see if they uh, see if he uses it here against Moreau. Seems to suit him as well, the under 90 kilos category. Yeah, it, was, it was a good height. Yeah, he was a good height in, and he, he looks a bit yeah. more beefed up now. Oh, look at that. There, there it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> a little flick there. with a, It doesn't look much, but uh, I've seen a lot of people go over with that. I get the uh, feeling that Moreau has uh, had a look at it on video a couple of times. So this is a left against right as well situation. Look how they'll peck away at the sleeve. And that hip. Oh! Gets the Wazari for it, Moreau. Yeah, just went round the outside here. It were, they were both attacking there, but uh, it was Moreau that catches it and uh, yeah just on that elbow and sitting up a little bit I was wondering about that, that landing and yeah so the, the landing was the uh, key point there wasn't it uh, just on uh, the elbow it's got to be on the side or it's got to be on the back first blood to uh, Moreau though Shido straight away there for Moreau. Breaking the grip off and not coming back in to, to grip up now. So that's one of the things that they have to uh, get used to here now. They can't just snap it off for the sake of snapping off. You can snap it off and then dominate it. Just all calmed down a little bit now, hasn't it? Paletti just gathering himself. He want to launch that Ochigari again, but he's going to need both hands on. And he's only had the one. Morale also only had the one, but he picks up a second penalty. Yeah, now that kind of changes things now because it means that uh, not one mistake now can uh, Moreau make. So if he drops or uh, steps outside of the area, doesn't attack at the right time, he loses this match. Oh, and that was nice. <laughs> Just managed to turn off that. Very tricky, isn't he, Palati? Just launches it from nowhere. Yeah, just it, it looks like uh, it almost happened by accident, but it's not. And look at uh, the extreme right stance that he has. Makes it awkward for Moreau there. Moreau's trying to get in uh, uh, through for the Uchimata. He did, no chance. He did throw someone else earlier on yeah, today. No, he did. Who was opposite. Who was opposite. Opposite stance. stance yeah. And he hooked, hooked the leg in and then came in for the uh, Uchimata. Yes, he did. But I think it will be a bit more difficult here with Pilati.
Oh, and again he does it. Slightly different grip this time, so he didn't do it right-handed. He did it left-handed, off a right-handed grip. Interesting. He does it both sides. <laughs> Flirting with danger by not gripping up with that left hand, though. Yeah, I think they, they are. They're both flirting with danger, actually, and uh, that's how it's going to happen. I think there's going to be one minor score that will get it. Well, we did say it was going to be a, a bit of a tactical affair. That's the other little technique that he likes to throw in. Yeah, just latches onto the front leg there and uh, throws himself backwards. It's not the most attractive, but can be effective. Yeah, I don't think there's uh, much. It's not attractive, like you say. The judo's not attractive, but um, wins major tournaments. And that was a good attack there from Moreau. So again, now it's up to Palati to uh, fire back. I think one more good attack from Moreau would uh, put another penalty up for Palati. Almost for sure, that's what uh, his coach is shouting out as well. So now there's a danger of Palati getting the second Shido here. And there it is. Both fighters now with two penalties. Palati just took that little bit too long. Now he's starting to go to work here, Moreau. He can feel this now. Starting to climb ahead, piling on the uh, pressure. Good attack out of danger, I have to say. Well, certainly looks like Moreau's the one that's uh, commanding. That's, that's it. it. It's all over. So <laughs> it's all over now. Palati uh, it's just thrown it away with that drop. Uh, that will get him a third penalty and it will be all over. Win by default uh, for Moreau. And, you know, it's the, the one thing, isn't it? I mean, you can't do it. From a tactical point of view, you, you know that you can't. Every technique that you put in has to be a good one. Yes, unfortunately, that uh, was particularly poor. Kind of ran out, ran out of ideas, as opposed to running out completely of steam. It just looked as though he didn't know what to do and just dropped. Yep. I think you're right. He, he just uh, ran out of steam a little bit, and it was uh, one of those where he thought he's just climbing on top of this. Half a thought, and if you only put half an effort into it, it's, uh, it's like uh, you come in 
not really believing that you're going to throw with it. Doesn't really show what kind of performance these guys have put in to get to this far. You know that this was the closest, wasn't it? Uh, but there was no contact there. You could see a big gap there underneath the elbow and uh, and his side. So no score. One or two close ones. Morao Sanchiro of Japan, the gold medal winner in the under 90 kilo category. Ah, Someone got lucky. I was going to say, that's a great <laughs> shot, isn't it? Wonderful. Coming up next, the first of the bronze medal contests in the under 78 kilo category. Emma Reed of Great Britain goes up against Myra Aguiar of Brazil. It will be Reed in the white Jadogi Aguiar in blue and the referee in the middle for this one is David Fuentes of Australia. Emma Reed coming out here and she knows that uh, she has uh, a hard match here because uh, this is the former world champion coming out. Olympic medalist. This lady has been around a long time. So much experience, and she's still here for well over a decade at top level. Emma Reed in white, Aguiar in blue. She's got to try and make sure that she doesn't go behind on attacks. And I think uh, she's got to think about pace here. I think if uh, I was shouting any advice, it would be that you've got to be first in. Can't wait. Oh, it's all over. Big Uchimata there from Aguiar. She hopped it in and support leg went really central. We'll see it when we uh, see it back in slow motion there. But uh, she started by just hooking the leg in for the Uchimata, but then it was the support leg that created the lift. Never got out of the starting blocks, really. Emma Reed, no chance to give us a show of what She'd done early in the day to get this far. Myra Aguiar, as Neil said, first to the attack. It was always going to be about uh, pace, wasn't it? Uh, we, we knew that. Here she's set up for it now. There's the, uh, the leg going in, but uh, look at the support leg, how the support leg now goes central on the second stab. And that's what actually gets the lift. The more central the uh, support leg is, then the uh, higher the opponent goes. There's the first catch. She gets central. And then a nice Uchimata there to finish it all off. That big left arm over the back, controlling it. That pulling hand there, the Kazushi hand on the sleeve, making sure that she finishes it off. Yeah, it's always a pity when you don't get to show your best. And unfortunately, Emma Reed wasn't able to come up with the kind of performance that would have made for a tight bronze medal contest. Mind you, we've got a second one coming up now. Hamada Shori of Japan goes up. 
against Iraima Silvestra of the Dominican Republic. It'll be Hamada in the white, Jadogi Silvestra in blue. And the referee in the middle for this one is Heather Lutjens of Belgium. Well, this lady coming out here is the Olympic champion and she looked totally out of sorts in her first match, I have to say. In fact, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever seen her out there um, just not wanted to be there. And she's worked her way back through to a bronze medal position or bronze, bronze medal fight. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was, um, it was strange to see. Well, so what, what, she fell behind, didn't she? I was going to say, what, what, what's the, uh, what, what do you call save. it? Save. This is a save. Yeah, this is the save. This is the <laughs> save for her, so she could save a bad day, or a disastrous day, just make it a bad day. <laughs> She's up here against Sylvester of Dominican Republic. And she's a fighter, uh, yeah. uh, Sylvester. Slightly unknown quantity. <laughs> that wasn't far off, was it, there? <laughs> she would have liked to have been a little bit quicker to transition from standing to Niwas. Unfortunately, missed the opportunity. It was there for a moment. And the, the crowd realized it as well. They have so much depth in Japan. And uh, I'd tell you now that uh, this will be difficult for Hamada. Now she's starting to go to work. Sylvester's come out here saying, I'm going to control this. She's got hold of the head there. And uh, those attacks are meaningful attacks. And, and it's also so clear where Hamada wants to work. I mean, that was almost a desperate attempt to pull her into, to pull her opponent into Niwaza. Is yeah, well, I think that's part of, uh, you know, the surprise today. There's no, um, there's no real chase either, you know. So this is an ideal opportunity for her, isn't it? But uh, there's no real chase. And it's almost uh, lack of desire. Now she goes. Here we go. So this is what we know her for. Obatori Igeishi there. And she'll get into a position where one leg is trapped. And then she'll take, uh, well, the top half of her opponent, wrap it up. She's onto the arm now. Can she get it? Hamada thought that she tapped. She's saying, yeah, she's I saying, yeah, I have. I did. <laughs> I think uh, Sylvester there just doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. She said, I, I submitted. So Hamada had an arm lock on and Sylvester submitted and uh, because the referee didn't see it properly. No, she's, co she's going on. <laughs> wow. I'm surprised. I'd, I'd like to see that from a different mm. angle as well, just to see how that did unfold. Thank goodness for uh, two or three cameras that we've got now. Now she's going to go on to the arm again, and she'll... D well, she did well there. Sylvester doing everything right there. Hamada trying to uh, tie that arm up and then start a turn, but uh, groundwork techniques don't count towards attacking movements, which I always find is incredible. I don't get mm. that, because it takes just as much energy. And also, you, there's three ways of winning on the ground. It doesn't make sense. Head again, I think. Yeah, just tucked underneath. Second penalty then to Sylvester. <laughs> this is the danger again now. Yeah, get down here because uh, <laughs> I want to attack you in Newaza. She'll do the obatory geishi. Watch the leg go trapped. Now she'll take the leg out, tie up the top half now. This leg's going to come out. Now, we uh, see the Japanese team, women's team especially, do this time and time again. There's the old Saikomi, and that will be all over. So, not going to move from there. And uh, no. definitely, uh, yes, not even 
twitching <laughs> at the moment. So uh, it's going to be a win for Hamada, the Olympic champion. But uh, I have to say that uh, something not quite right there. There's the great Yoshihiro Yamashita, who is now the uh, president of the Japanese Judo Federation. Yeah, well, it wasn't her best day, Amada Shori, but she's managed to pick up a bronze medal. She'll find herself on the podium at, at a grand slam, but she wanted to be on the top spot as opposed to a couple of spots down. Look troubled to me, but... Well, it's kind of a smile there, isn't it? <laughs> well, I, th I, think, uh, I think she was invited over for the photograph in Japanese. That's what caught, caught her attention. And then, of course, they thanked her in Japanese. So it all went well for, for that particular group of photographers. <laughs> Here's the move that uh, did it here, the uh, Obitori Gaeshi, which is uh, controlling the belt, Obi meaning belt, and... Uh, the leg gets trapped up there, but they tie up the top half, make sure that's under control. Use the other leg to uh, take the other one out, and then the seconds can start. So as long as one leg isn't entangled, then the uh, countdown will happen, or count up. Well, she did tap out on this occasion, but... Um noticed that Hamada didn't move. <laughs> she wasn't going to move, no, I didn't think so. <laughs> They'll have to drag me off here. We come now to the final of the under 78 kilo category in Berlinia of Israel goes up against Alice Balandi of Italy. It will be Lanier in the white Jadogi Balandi in blue. They've met on two occasions before Balandi has come out on top on both of those. The referee in the middle for this one is Friedrich Katalin of Hungary. Yeah, I think this is a different, uh, di different day. I think Lanier is going to come out absolutely like a steam train I really I, you can see the determination on her face there she's really pumped up and I've, well the few times that I've seen she's getting better and better this lady but this one here has been a surprise as well coming through she beat um, Hamada to get there en route and Berlandi of Italy well it should be a great match I think so but I don't think it's going to be I mean the 2-0 that uh, she's leading at the moment. She might start again with this one because this is a different, um, uh, definitely a different Lanier coming out. Look at the pace because I think that's what uh, people will find interesting here. And Lanier comes out absolutely <laughs> chomping at the bit. <laughs> and Balandi says, right, enough's enough. To have some back. Yeah, <laughs> see, yeah. Well, the Israelis have, uh, are just churning them out. These um, ladies here, yeah, they've got a Shido apiece here now. That, that Shido showing on the board, just for patter, 
patting each other's grips off. They've got to come together and grip up. Well, I think Lenaire needs to take that right hand off mm. and smack it over the back again because that's what caused the trouble. But uh, Belandi, credit to her, she knows that. Second Shido on the board, wasn't able to free the right hand up. Yeah, that's come quick, hasn't it, that? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think that sometimes, you know, the second Shido, if it comes on too quick, it can change the whole, the whole direction of the contest. I mean, I know that's the intention sometimes, but um, it is all about getting the balance. If you're going to give the Mashido a piece to rev it all up, that's fine. And that's it. You see that? She snapped the grip off there. She could have lost it on that. And it wouldn't have been correct. And now, of course, they, they think, well, no, we can't stop a final because of that. Well, Lanier's got to be in first with the attack here. Beland is very clever. Set a really good tempo. Another couple of those and uh, it could be all done and dusted. Maybe, ju maybe just one more. Got to go now, Lanier. This is it then. Yeah, this is it now. She's got to try and save this. Could yeah. be it. This is it. Just off the pace. So, uh, yeah, she was falling behind. Like you said, uh, just another couple of strong attacks there. And... It was a good result, uh, definitely, for Belandi. Yeah, she knew exactly how to play to that tactical strength. She was also counting up the attacks, counting up the numbers. Yeah, I think both of these here, you know, because obviously uh, Coach there is pretty uh, astute as well. And, yeah. Uh, he, uh, yeah, they were counting them up. And, you know, when she came off there, Body language gives it away, doesn't it? She kind of expected that. She, she knew it was going to happen. Quell the storm and then control it. Disappointment for Inba Lanier, the number one seed this morning. Alice Balandi just squeezing past her in this final to take a gold medal. down to attacks in the end. Landy just good enough. Come now to the awarding ceremony for men in the under 90 kilo category.
The medals are being presented by the Vice President of the Advertising and Sales for CNN, Miss Corina Killer. The first of the bronze medals goes to Ivan Felipe Silva Morales. Bronze medal also for Becca Vinyashvili of Georgia. Silver medalist is Christian Parlati of Italy. And the gold medal goes to Murao Sanshiro of Japan. Just looking at that rostrum, what what a what a Setup that is, my goodness, there's some great fighters on that rostrum. A bit like the 81s and uh, nine, uh, 73s yesterday, there are just so many. Well, I think they'll have this man in, uh, in mind. For the next two years, we're going to see a lot of him this in the qualification. And now the national anthem of Japan. Vinyashvili and Silva Morales were the bronze medal winners. It was Parlati who picked up silver. Morrell, however, it was walked away with the gold medal. Yeah, great performance. Really good performance all the way through. Tactically minded as well. just about scoring it on all the time. Sometimes you've got to win the match. Coming up next, the first of the bronze medal contest in the under 100 kilo category. Daniel Eich of Switzerland goes up against Nicolas Sherazadishvili of Spain. It will be Eich in the white judogi. Shirazadishvili in blue, and the referee in the middle for this one is Ramzi Shamirov of Tajikistan. Well, Shirazadishvili is a uh, former world champion at uh, the weight below, under 90 kilograms. This man here, Ike of Switzerland here, having a great day. He's world ranked 22, and uh, Shirazadishvili is world ranked 27 but uh, don't forget he's gone up a category two-time world champion at the weight below I have to say he got caught by Aida, Aida of Japan in the semi-final with an absolutely beautiful classical Kuriyashi Barai which is a foot sweep and uh, he'll be wanting to uh, do a little bit of a save here I like that <laughs> That's catchy. <laughs> that red back patch is for his world title at the weight below this. He still keeps it because he's still the world champion. At the he's weight below. At the yeah. weight below, but he's moved up. 
Yeah, and difficult for him sometimes to accept that uh, he started losing at this uh, weight. Uh, slightly different, uh, and his height is always a massive advantage in the under 90 kilograms. Well, this is under 100 kilograms, so it's 10 kilos difference, this weight category. And uh, so his height, not such a great advantage to him here. And I think uh, it's uh, been a little bit of a challenge to uh, cope with that. Not only that, you're putting 10 kilos on around your body in different ways, in muscle uh, mass. And uh, that means it's a totally different thing when you're attacking somebody. The speed, the impact, everything different. The total, uh, the, the balance is different and you have to adjust. That big right arm there normally controls the back and the head. And uh, it's just been taken off here by uh, Ike. And he's controlling the hand as well. Really good gripping strategies here by the Swiss fighter. And now decides to go left. And now Big o uh, Ko Soto feels the danger there. Just really having a real problem here to get his balance right. And you can see it's a little bit flustered. Oh, a nice one there. Drop down Cianaghi off the sleeves. Well, sometimes you've got to readjust your dress and uh, make sure that it's tucked into the belt. Easier said than done when your forearms are full of lactic acid. <laughs> One of the most difficult things, and the referee always says, go on, tuck yourself in. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> but they don't. <laughs> They're not allowed to touch the fighters. Oh, look at that. Oh, big Kosoto there. Ike was in there. Almost bent over there, wasn't he there? Sure as a disfilly then. He knows that he's behind on attacks here and uh, he's just got a Shido penalty up there. He's going to have to take the ball by the horns now and go for it. That was a good one. Just had Eich off balance there. Ike is maybe just a couple of centimetres taller than Shelly. Well, that's what I'm saying. He can't get that big right yeah. arm over the top there. He's, he's oh. got, having to go around the back. Around the back. He's not against that idea either. He still looks dangerous. Now he's got it. This is where he can do it. Big hip throw. He's got massive hip movements here. Yeah, he's just making um, yeah, Ike going to be a penalty there, isn't here. it, for yeah. Ike? Nice. That was also clever. <laughs> so I get uh, Shido. Good tactical play oh. there. Oh. Close. Now then, he didn't have any control there. Shiraz had a disbelief. 
It was uh, Ike that went for the uh, big pickup. And uh, didn't get the landing, didn't get the side landing that he wanted. Every time he goes over the top there, Shirota Disfili has that arm popped off by Ike. Ike's not having any of it. Now it's Ike. Ike's going to go for this. He's going to go for the big Coast Soto around the back there. Needs to go in. Change of direction this time. Shrasadishvili has the belt. I think you're going to see the difference in conditioning here now. I think this is where it's going to be won now. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely in the realms of Shrasadishvili. I is running on empty here. And Shrasadishvili he's just been around that much longer at a much higher level and the expectations for him for preparation are going to be much greater i think he's just going to shade it now didn't get the rotation there with that drop Sienaghi has been taken off that now. I'm glad because they're both going for it here. Now, somebody, something can happen here because Ike is dangerous for me. That's a great one. What a change of direction there. Woo, he's <laughs> a big breath of uh, relief there. Shirazadas Philly just so pleased to get that eventual change of direction well he stayed with him for quite a while didn't he Daniel Eich it was just you, know, you, you began to see signs of him not unraveling but just coming apart a little bit just starting to crack a bit where there were cracks in the armour weren't there yeah Certainly, uh, started, uh, <laughs> exactly. yeah, that was close, wasn't it? Yeah, no, he did do that. It, uh, yeah, as soon as he finished it, he went, oh, thank Whew. goodness for that. Wondered when that was going to come. Nicholas Shedazadishvili overcoming a spirited uh, performance from Daniel Eich of Switzerland. Such a nice guy as well, really, yeah. absolute gentleman. Credit to this man, gave him yeah. a good fight, really did. Excellent. Looked like he could score from uh, every angle almost. A little bit of a panic there, he thought he was going to be picked up. And then he suddenly changes the direction. So he goes over for the uh, wrap up of the arm. Swiss goes for the um, pick up and then he changes the direction completely there. Comes around the outside of the leg. And it's almost a Harborelli, isn't it? <laughs> well, Sir if you really just about changes at the right time. If you can lip read German, <laughs> you, know, you, yeah. you know exactly what he said there. <laughs> Not even going to go there. No, no. was close.
Well, coming up next, we've got the second of the bronze medal contests in the under 100 kilo category. Veg Schombo of Hungary goes up against Matthias Madsen of Denmark. It'll be Veg in the white jodogi, Madsen in blue. Two to one, the head-to-head -head is, and the referee in the middle for this one, Jean-Claude Jimbi of Gabon. Yeah, they've had a, a really good run through, haven't they, this tournament? Fighting for major points. And uh, remember that now, this two years prior to the Olympics, that uh, every point counts towards Olympic qualification. So it goes towards world ranking within the category. Top 18 guaranteed going. And then you've got wild cards as well for the Olympic Games. So it is uh, a pretty elite event, the Olympic Games. And you've got to put in a lot of work to get there first. So if you have a look at the uh, world rankings of these two here, 53 and 73, they will change after this uh, particular match, for sure. They'll go way up, but uh, still got a long way to go to get into the qualification zone. Feg is in white here. Well, I think every time he twitches here, he's going to get a, a round of applause. He's going to be well behind him. Ungvary Miklos has swapped his judogi for a nice-looking suit there. He's in the coach. I was going to say there, he's yeah. seen a little bit of action, that guy. Oh, it's going to be yes. it! What an Uchi matter that was! Oh, what a readjustment there, and the crowd absolutely on their feet. Oh, they love it, don't we? And we said, didn't we, that we like it when one of the home crowd uh, gets a a medal, wow, what a way to do it. You want to know what a Nippon is? We'll show you in a second for the replay because that was brilliant. Lovely Uchimata, didn't connect immediately. It wasn't lifting immediately, but then once it made a readjustment uh, with the uh, support leg, got it more central, up he went. Hips were through first of all, then the leg went in there. See how he springs up. Look at the support leg, that's his right leg there. Springs it back there, and then up it goes. He was on tip toe. First, second, and then the third one there took him up and over. He went so high, he was touching the rafters. Brilliant stuff there. And I said, didn't I? I said, you want to see what an, a Nippon is? The difference between... Didn't see any of his backpacks there, did you? It just kind of <laughs> disappeared there. <laughs> very there, very happy. <laughs> I saw another, a former under 100 kilo category athlete from Hungary earlier on, Daniel uh, Hadfi Daniel was walking up down, he'll be proud. Happy for them. Well we did say didn't we that it's gonna be very hard. It's it's always gonna be hard anyway for 
Hungary to get uh, medals here at a Grand Slam, but uh, they've got plenty of opportunity and they've uh, done well so far. We come now to the final of the under 100 kilo category. Valam Lipatiliani of Georgia goes up against Ida Kantaro of Japan. It'll be Lipatiliani in the white jadogi, Ida in blue. There is the route to the final. The referee in the middle for this one is Offer Ben Zvi of Israel. Great to see Lipatiliani back. He said he was finished after the last Olympic Games, but uh, it must have been too much for him. And uh, he thought, well, hold on a minute. So he's still ranked at 10 here. This might make a difference as well with these points. And uh, thinking, well, just two years to go, I want to finish off with a, a really good medal. Aida, he's got uh, the most amazing Uchimata. He really has great technique, great posture. They fought each other four times before, and uh, it's 3 1 to Aida. This is their fifth meeting on Grand Prix Grand Slam tournaments. Straight away onto the sleeves there, just to uh, prevent uh, the domination of the uh, Kumakata, because uh, the one that dominates the Kumakata, or the gripping, is the one that will initiate the uh, technique. Because as soon as you've got your grip there, two hands on, in you go. That's why a lot of people uh, are starting to do techniques, or not starting to do them, but doing techniques off one hand. Because it's not always possible to get two hands on. Look at that, big hips across there now. Looking for the uh, Makikomi here, Lepatiliani. So Aida just a little bit behind on, uh, needs to start his work. He'll look particularly to uh, get in for the uh, Uchimata, which is right the way at the middle. But uh, he'll have to find the, the right line. And uh, you can see here that Lipatiliani here slightly turning right hip forwards there in order to prevent it. Now, this is the situation. As soon as they take a step or uh, Aida makes him take a step, that will give him the chance in. And now the Uchimata! So he found the way in from the Uchi, uh, Uchigari. Leg was in, and that was what he was looking for. Scores a Wazari. There's the Uchigari. That means then that he's caught the leg, and then he changes it to his Uchimata there. Lepatiliani goes on to his side. Half the contest gone. Lepatiliani with a bit of work to do here. Oh, well, it was all, oh, I was going to say it was all about finding the way in, wasn't it? Can't always find that, uh, that right route. This isn't good for Aida, I tell you now. This is uh, Lipatiliani likes yep, it from yep. here. Almost. He almost, didn't he? Yeah. He almost fell into a Lipatiliani trap there. <laughs> yeah, maybe just not paying enough attention there. Hida Kentaro and thinking, well, there's nothing in this. And then almost finding himself in Osaikomi. <laughs> yeah, well, he scored with it. <clears throat> couple of times uh, during the day, yes. Lipatiliani. 
did indeed. And now looking for the uh, Soda Makikomi. So he'll put a pile of pressure on now, especially in this last minute. It's the nice posture from Aida that I like. But uh, of course, doesn't always work against the, uh, the against the Georgian style. Georgian style here going over one side, grabbing the belt, and he's causing him all sorts of problems. A little bit of scrambling to get away from that then. Gets a Shido as a result. Watch him again. Liptiliani will go over the top. That's what I would be doing all the time if I was him. Not so easy now, though, because no. he's having his sleeve dominated. And the time's run out. It's going to be a Shido here, certainly for Liptiliani. He says, I'll give up the Shido rather than be thrown. Oh, well... I, I thought on that occasion that uh, he was kind of looking for it, Lipitiliani. That's it now. Five seconds, he has a quick look at the clock there. Just needs to uh, be busy, doesn't he? That's it, it's all over. Still looks in good condition though. Lipitiliani gave, uh, gave it all and he was a bit annoyed that he uh, got caught with a beautiful Uchimata though, Aida. Just did enough. Good posture, kept his uh, cool and that was a good performance. Another two gold medals already here for Japan. Yeah, Lipitiliani had a couple of shots at either scoring standing up or doing something in Niwa in Niwaza. He wasn't completely out of it, but uh, Ida Kintaro came up with a score, and that was enough to take him past the Georgian talisman, if you like. Slightly unusual execution of Uchimata. One arm, one hand around up on the collar, and the other on the on the belt. <laughs> yeah, I think it's also the uh, change of direction, isn't it? Uh, and uh, he had to do the Ouchi there in order to catch the leg, so that uh, he couldn't slip the hip. It's always against left, against right, or opposite, should I say? The Sakeshi, the. Um, moving of the hip so that uh, you almost throw yourself is such a danger but uh, he did it well there Come now to the awarding ceremony for women in the under 78 kilo category. The medals are being presented by the World Promotion Director of the International Judo Federation, IJF Hall of Fame member and President of the Kodokan, Mr. Uemura Haruki. Former Olympic champion as well. Yeah, we can add that. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw, yeah, that, just throw in. that one in. <laughs> the first of the bronze medals goes to Hamada Shori of Japan. There's a bronze medal also for Myra Agia of Brazil. Silver medal goes to Inba Lanier of Israel. The gold medal 
goes to Alice Balandi of Italy. Well, Balandi has a world and an Olympic gold medalist off to her left there in the bronze medal positions. Yeah. <laughs> what a day she's had. And she beat both of them. Yeah, <laughs> true. Because it's not often that uh, you beat everybody on the podium. Sometimes you only, you only beat two, but uh, the two that she did beat were the, the two most decorated in the category. So all three fell to Balandi on that podium. Sometimes there's one that you haven't beaten. They were on the, the other side. This time round, Balandi did all of them. And now the national anthem of Italy. Amada and Agiava were the bronze medal winners. Lanier picked up a silver oh, and smile and it was Balandi who picked up the gold medal. Coming up next, we've got the first of the bronze medal contests in the plus 78 kilo category. Raz Hershko of Israel, the number one seed from this morning goes up against Su Chin of China. The referee in the middle for this one is Felimati Karinkanta of Finland. It will be Hershko in the white shirt over the shoe in blue. Let's make sure we got the right one here, Neil. Shu Shuyan it is. Not a mix up with the, the two shoes this morning. <laughs> one being Shu, XU, and the other being Su. A little bit of a different issue. This is uh, Shu Shuyan. Well, certainly um, Raz Hersko has been enjoying some amazing form over the last uh, few tournaments here. It's got the work cut out here, but um, I'm telling you now, it'll be non stop work here from Hersko. Well, it was the, the, the teammate, uh, Su Shin who um, beat, beat Raz in um, the quarter-final. 
And that was close there. Dropped Sianagi there from Hersko. Dropped right the way underneath there. And Sue now looking for the uh, Newaza. Look at that. Really meaningful this as well. You don't see that very often, but uh, look. Hersko going, no, I'm not having any of that. Come off. But uh, she was really hunting for it there, uh, Sue. coach there just uh, being told just calm it just a little bit but uh, you know they just so passionate you know about uh, the the results and they just um, want their girls to do well they rev them up he's an excitable character yeah, he is absolutely and shiny uh, shiny hirsch go shoe picks up a penalty for passivity Yep, I told you that uh, Ersko would uh, be putting the work in here. She just will be non-stop. Nice Osoto this time. Either way, this would be a good medal for her to win this, uh, to, to beat the uh, Chinese as well, especially coming up to the World Championships. because uh, they'll be hoping for uh, a possibility of a medal. That was a breakaway there. I agreed there. The, um, well, Shani, the uh, coach there was saying, well, she broke away there from that grip shoe, and uh, I believe she uh, should have got a penalty, and there it is. Nice Ouchi, really nice driving Ouchi. Good judo here coming on for, uh, from these two. Really good stand-up judo. Just manages to turn onto yeah, a front Yeah, just here. did well, didn't she? She yeah. really did well. Good judo all round, yes, good, a good a really good CI. Yeah, good positions. You know, not only have you got to look at the commitment, but you've got to look at the control with the uh, hands as well. And also, it's about the commitment to it. Am I going to score? Yes, I'm going to score with this. I really mean to score. I want to keep hold with the hands. And there we go again. And she keeps hold again. Just the sheer power of Shu there manages to uh, quell that attack. Great match, this. Really good. Well, I think she will, uh, she's out, don't forget, with her, her teammate. Ooh. And I think she'll be out to prove that she's the number one here. But uh, I think they might send both of them to the World Championships. As soon as she twitched there, she was in there, wasn't she? Great opportune uh, stuff. Getting better and better every time I see her, her scope. Yeah, I think she's more confident in, yeah. the, in the weight category now because she's knocked so many of them out. Maybe she felt that she was a kind of an interloper previously. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it really is how they mean uh, to throw when they come in. You can tell... There is absolute belief that I can score with this. And it is, uh, you know, 100%. And there's left Sodi Sodi again. 
got to come back now. Shu Sheryan with something of her own. Too late, picks up a second penalty. 40 odd seconds left to go. Hirschko with the advantage now. Hasn't put a score on the board, nor, nor has Shu. However, the two penalties will go against her. Half a minute left to go. This is a good battle. I think she realizes that a couple more attacks here and it might just tie this up. She needs to be first in. Saying that, and I don't think she wants to put a, a false attack in, she wants it to be a strong one. That was a good attack. And that's exactly what uh, her coach is shouting out now. So uh, one more attack, uh, one more attack, I think. And I think that Shu will get uh, a third penalty. They've started it off into golden score. Quite often situations like that on, a, on an attack, they'll give the third Shido and they won't go into the golden score. But they've gone in and there's another one. Oh, it could be a change of direction. Yeah, Veli I Mati think it Karen was two Ka parts. Yeah. Veli Mati Karen Cantor will have said the first one stopped and you're on the ground, so I'm not going to give you that. Yeah. This might be it. That's right. enough. <laughs> <laughs> And the reason that they didn't give the um, penalty to Shu when they came to the end of regulation time is they'd only given her one 10 seconds before. <laughs> they'd given her a penalty. But now they do. Uh, all over. Yeah. She wasn't able to keep up with the tempo that Hershko set. And Hershko has been really clever. She knew that three or four attacks would do it. Wasn't necessarily trying to, um, to throw, but she, what she was doing, yeah, using that advantage. That's clever. Didn't need uh, Hershko in the chair either. <laughs> Bronze medal for Raz Hershko. I mean, how many is that in a row that she's picked up? Well, uh, you know, like I say, I, I think that she's getting better and better against better people. Yeah. Uh, each yeah. of the techniques that I see her doing seem to have uh, more uh, about them uh, in as that they uh, more conviction, uh, better hands, better control and more meaningful is, is what I'm looking for. Well, at the beginning of the year, Neil, she picked up a bronze medal at the Grand Slam in Tel Aviv, went to Antalya in April and picked up the silver. Silver at the European Championships in April, gold a couple of weeks ago in Ulaanbaatar, and bronze here um, in, where are we, 8th of July. Five on the trot. No wonder she's catapulted up the IGF World Ranking list. Bronze medal to Raz Hershko. We've got a second bronze medal contest coming up, and it's the second of our Chinese athletes. Right, Nihil Chikrahu of Tunisia goes up against Sushin of China. It'll be Chekrahu in the white Jadogi, Su in blue, and the referee in the middle for this one is Ramzi Shamirov of Tajikistan. Su Shin hasn't even got a world ranking on there, so. Uh... It's uh, one of those, you know, so she's uh, obviously been sent out. Like I say, it'd be interesting to see if they do send two out 
uh, to the World Championships. Remember, two categories you can uh, put double representation in. So it means you can send nine out of seven weight categories in the men and in the women. The coach is still on his way back from... Uh, Had a uh, quick from, run around the yeah, stadium. Yeah, from Shu Shouyan. <laughs> he's going, he's going. just about made it into the chair. He couldn't come out for the walk. <laughs> Left-sided effort. Good start from Sue. This, this may be the, the better of the two super heavyweights from China. And I'll tell you what, uh, Shu Shiyan, who we saw previously, wasn't that bad. I thought she was excellent. I thought that her techniques were very, uh, very strong, but I, I thought also her transition into Newaza as well was very positive. But uh, look how strong, oh, my goodness, physically. And uh, exactly the same here. And uh, Sushin is uh, just, you know, you can see that she really wants to throw for Ripon. There's uh, no doubt about that. And she didn't look worried about that arm around the waist. You know, normally they, they, they bend to, to make the space bigger. She didn't worry about it. Chakra, who had the arm around the waist, and Sushin did, just didn't worry about it. Almost sharp enough to follow up with the Ashley Waza after the missed left turn Aggie. I, I, I like to see that, you know, putting the two things together. Well, both feet went outside the area there. I thought she just drifted out there, Su Chin. Whether it was part of the action, if it was part of the action, they won't uh, penalise for it. No, they have. <coughs> so uh, give uh, the Shido for that. You can't just drift out of the area. You have to stay within that, uh, well, I was going to say the yellow, but it's a kind of a green, isn't it? Yeah, this time round in Budapest, we've had a slight colour change. Well, I thought she did it again there, but that was just off a, a technique. Oh, yes, yeah, just. Yeah. Slightly different that time, but again, flirting with the edge. Slightly untidy work on the, on the mat edge there. I think this is the same coach sitting in the, China, uh, in the chair for Su Xin from Yu Song. It was the last super heavyweight from China that we saw. I've always got to wonder, haven't you, how many uh, partners can these big heavyweights get? It must be a massive problem for people like uh, Teddy Renair. You know, he'll have regular training partners, but uh, to get people to spar with, I mean, middleweights have plenty you know middleweights lightweights they're just you know they're they're coming out and you can go one weight below one weight up above i mean they must have to do the same they must and she did it again so bad on the edge uh su chin she's lucky that nihil chakra who distracted the referee there and was picking up a penalty for passivity well if i was chakra who's coach i'd say just back her up you know, turn it towards the edge there and you'll get a reaction. No, it wasn't there. It was pre premeditated. It wasn't nowhere near in a position to launch that attack. It was blocked easily. The, the thought crossed her mind, didn't it? I'll try Cernaghi here. <laughs> Almost caught. Yeah, it wasn't far off, was it? The elbow was out and uh, it wasn't quite on the side.
Well, certainly for me, Su Chin is the one that's uh, really taking the initiative, saying that, and uh, in she goes, Shikrahu. Some bump to the lip that she's taken. Gums, maybe a little bit of blood needs to be wiped away, and then we'll get back underway. Never a nice place to be, is it? There it gives us a chance, though, to have a look at some of the uh, statistics. 35 now, been around for a while. Nihal Chekrahu. I'm a world medalist as well at uh, open weight, if I remember. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember, was, was, where did we have that? Was it Marrakesh or somewhere that we had? Yeah, it was. We had, we had a world open, didn't we? Yeah, yeah exactly. Here she comes, uh, so switching on the way back. Seven times a Grand Slam silver medal winner. Four bronze medals she's picked up. So a lot of medals, isn't it? And she here, here she is again, contesting another one. Looking to pick up bronze medal number five. I think they'll be uh, devastated, the Chinese, if they don't pick up a medal. Let's see if they've got two really strong and uh, mobile heavyweights yeah, yeah. as well. Got to get rid of that grip. It's not helping anyone. Twenty odd seconds left to go in regulation time. Score now would finish it, really. Just any score will do it. And Koichi. Yeah, <laughs> nice little change of direction yeah. there, wasn't it? A slight faint to the front. Just tiny, you know, little things that you see and think, okay. We will have to have a period of golden score to sort this one out. Oh, now then, my goodness me, two, uh, wow, that was a clash, wasn't it? Really was. Both moved at the same time there, and uh, that could have been uh, could have been nasty. But uh, luckily, the legs weren't quite at the right angle. Thank goodness. Got to give them both the due, though. They were both going in at the same yeah. time there. Well, she's got the overhand grip there, Shikrahu, and uh, the underhand grip. Should I say, Shikrahu has? It's going to be a Shido there. Not left with much choice, is no, it? No, not really. I guess uh, they've got to, got to work now. Both just standing there. Maybe taking stock of things or just taking a breath. But now they're both on two penalties. One attack there, and that's one attack each. So uh, try and count the attacks up here. If they get a differential of about three attacks, I think uh, one of them will get penalized. And that was a false attack. That oh could be it. 
That was just absolutely a false attack. Oh. <laughs> wow, gets away with it there. I mean, it, it is... I mean, you've got to think about the power of uh, Sue there just, just cracking it off and uh, defending it. Now then. <laughs> yeah, even Sue's going. What about well, that? Yeah. I don't think she'll get it now because of that. Yeah. yeah. We can't have them dictate when, when they were to give the penalties out. Maybe she'll attack now. Close as we've been, that is, and yeah. that might just be it. No, they're going to still come together, I think. Not quite enough control. What well, do they do decide they've to given give it. a score? They've yeah. given the Wazari yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And that's it. Yeah. Well, I don't know if she uh, kind of expected that. That was definitely, uh, I mean, we're going to have a look at the landing now of it. If it's on the side, then it will be, it will warrant the uh, score of uh, Wazari. Su Xin of China picks up a bronze medal. Yeah, first ever medal in uh, any Grand Slam, Grand Prix. She hasn't got a, a Grand Prix or Grand Slam point. And the first time out gets yeah. bronze medal. Yeah. Well, we'll change now, of course. E expect to see a little bit more of Su Xin and Shu Shi Yan. Have a look at this angle here. Yeah, down on the side and then up and then off. Well, a lot of you would be saying, well, the, the arm was, tr you know, out there trapped, but um, you're saying that as long as the side hits the ground. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the thinking behind that. Anyway, it's enough for this lady to yep. win bronze. Coming up next, the final of the plus 78 kilo category for women. The Dallas Ortiz of Cuba goes up against Tomita Wakaba of Japan. Let there be Ortiz in the white jidogi, Tomita in blue. The series between them is 1 1. That's how they got to this point. And the referee in the middle for this one is Roland Poiger of Austria. It really depends on uh, which uh, Ortiz comes out, doesn't it? You know, it, uh, you can't really tell. This lady here has been world Olympic champion. She has four Olympic medals in four Olympic Games. And uh, it's non-stop for her. This lady here could stop her, but uh, it all depends on which uh, Ortiz turns out uh, I've got to say that uh, at the beginning of the day I mean uh, she had a really poor start and just got better and better as the uh, day went on Tomita has been on good form so uh, probably just favorite for this but you can never tell yeah I agree with you you just don't know what you're going to get with um, Ortiz. She had the, undoubtedly, she will be on the highlights reel for the Tsubami Gaeshi. Beautiful bit of Ashi Waza. But the rest of it, well, I don't think so. Well, she looks to me as if she means business, that's for sure. 
come out at a different pace here. You can normally tell when they come out whether they mean business or not, whether they're going to walk around and just put in an attack every 10, 15 seconds. But uh, both of these are going to go for it, I think. Waiting for the counter, Ortiz. I think uh, she can't just just wait there. She'll have to do something positive. It's going to be passivity, passivity, I think. Shido, Shido. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, yeah. Well, what a drop down to see an there. Look nimble on her feet then when she was coming underneath. Off the uh, Sodi grip there. Did uh, kind of go against the arm, but she'll have to be cautious with that. Well, I've got to say, Tamita hasn't put an attack in yet. Now she has. Penalties apiece, and that could mean a disqualification to win this match. Or are they going to score? They were both looking at each other's fingernails there. They, they, just, uh, they had a rip apart there and uh, both lost a fingernail. Or part of. That went against the arm as well. Well, sometimes to uh, snap a grip off there, they'll uh, just put the old shoulder in there against a, a straight arm and it kind of breaks the grip off. But... Uh, Got to be careful that it's not putting an arm lock on. Now starting to go to work here to meet up. instructions there just uh, the coach just shouting something to her I think it'll be about pace Ortiz has just had to step off the tatami to have some treatment it, it's to a finger Neil was talking about and looking at their respective fingers well it's Ortiz who's had to have some tape removed and then taped back up yeah, well, any kind of blood there, that uh, whether it's on the face or the hand or wherever it is, is you're only allowed two visits to the doctor to bandage it up. That's why um, if it's the head, they come back on looking mummified. 
often they've got to stop the, the blood. But uh, it's not easy when you're sweating and uh, your heart's pumping. Of course, it's difficult to stop a stem of blood. You imagine that uh, a world or Olympic title is on the line for it and you get stopped because you've had to go off with a, a little cut to the finger three times. Ortiz is making her way back to the tatami now. 22 seconds left in this final. Both fighters have picked up two penalties apiece. A single error will lose that fight of the contest or a single score at this stage, I think, and you'll, you'll take it. Well, they're both, both of them are, are separating themselves. <laughs> a little smile there, wasn't there, I think? They're both <laughs> separating themselves oh. from each other's grips. They can feel it. And there's two shidos apiece there. Can't disqualify them both. Not that it hasn't been done. There's a reasonable effort <laughs> being put in by both athletes. Missed with the little oh, Oichigari yeah. from Tomita and then Ortiz. She was thinking about that drop, Sernagi, but the thought was a poor one. Yeah, and it had no rotation there. Shido's been given for better than that, but uh, anyway. A couple of really good attacks here would uh, wrap this up, I think. Now she's going to go for it here to meet up. Ortiz should not be drawn into the movement. It's got to be about oh, that's an attack. That's got to be yeah. it, surely. That is not an attack. That she was just it. a drop on the knees, and that, that should be all over. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it should have happened one before, I think, in my opinion. Got to get rotation on the Sienaghi attacks. You have to rotate all the way around. You've got to break balance as well. That's the main idea. A few hand slaps from Tomata. She's not hanging around for any photographs. <laughs> Look at the difference there, that particular attack and that one. And then the, uh, the one that didn't rotate all the way around, of course. And there it is. No rotation, didn't break the balance, so totally different. Come now to the awarding ceremony for men in the under 100 kilo category. The medals for the men's under 100 kilogram category. The medals are being presented by the Aloka president, Mr. Mustafa Beraf. 
The first of the bronze medals goes to Fek Trombo of Hungary. There's a bronze medal also for Nicolas Sherazadishvili of Spain. Silver medal goes to Valam Lipatiliani of Georgia. <laughs> the gold medal goes to Ida Kentaro of Japan. Really good performances on that uh, group there. It was brilliant stuff, and uh, Aruchimata was the uh, clincher. Had to get in, couldn't find the line in at first. In the end, he did. And now the national anthem of Japan. for the family picture, the winning quartet and the VIPs alongside. And then we'll have one just with the medal winners then. Veg and Sherazadishvili were the bronze medal winners. It was Libertiliani who picked up the silver. Ida was the gold medal winner. We've got one more weight category to bring you two awarding ceremonies and a highlights package as well and then we'll have a wrap up with Neil who will give you the rundown of the final medal table where Patiliani and Cherizadishvili remain for a, another picture as well okay we'll have the first of the bronze medal contest in the plus 100 kilo category. Magomedoma, Magomedomarov of the United Arab Emirates goes up against Gela Zalashvili of Georgia. It will be Magomedomarov in the white jadogi. Zalashvili in blue and the referee in the medal for this one is Yudita Isarova of Slovakia. Here's Neil. Well, Akhamed Marov coming out here. Fighting this man here. I think they fought in the uh, Junior World Championships and uh, it was 1-0. 
uh, to Zalashvili in their head-to-heads. Looking very determined. Uh, Zalashvili got beaten quite uh, convincingly by the great Teddy Renner. I think he thought he was going to uh, do a better job of it, but uh, we'll see him a little bit uh, in a little bit later. That big right arm over the back there is what he wants and uh, looking for the pick up here. Salashvili there just uh, straight away looking for the advantage. Medimerov kind of uh, looked as if he expected that uh, big arm over the back. Throwing the arm over the back. <laughs> so typical of the uh, Georgian style. Wrestling style that they have in Georgia there. And they can change the direction of the technique. They can do massive hit techniques from it. They can do big suplex techniques as well. Oh, and he just went for it there. Magomedomorov there. Kind of half waiting for it. It's like he's been watching films of Zalashvili. He thought, well, he caught me with that the first time. He's not going to get with me again. The, uh, there's a good uh, view, bird's eye view there. We've got, ah, oh, that was close. He almost kind of rolled into that, didn't he then? So Magomedomorov there comes in for a massive hip technique, but uh, almost landed on his side and then almost caught Zalishvili as well. Going to look for the uh, Sodi movement there off the sleeve, Zalashvili. As soon as he changes his uh, sleeve grip, yeah, it's going to be, well, just Zalashvili gets the Shido. Maybe Magomedov Marov was searching a little bit more than Zalashvili, and Zalashvili was the one who was hiding that one side. That's why he picked that up. This is where it could happen here. Big hips across. Gone off the oh other side. Oh my goodness, Won't has he got now. him? He might have him here. This might be it. Magomedomorov has uh, got Zalashvili in a hold here. He made a mistake, he really did. He's tapped He's out. He's tapped out anyway. He has tapped out, it's all finished. Well, that's two big surprises for Zalashvili. I don't think he'll be very happy about that. Bad day at the office for him. I can't remember seeing a tournament where he lost twice in the tournament, actually. Zalashvili. Well, he's come up against some high quality opposition today. Magomedomarov takes the first of the bronze medals in the plus 100 kilo category. 
Well, he almost he tried to take him uh, onto his own back, didn't he? Uh, or onto his back, but uh, didn't quite work out that way. Rolled the wrong way. If he'd have tied up that uh, left arm there, it would have been a different story, but uh, as it happens. Michael Medomarov happy to accept that and then he had the tap out as well from Zanashvili. Right, coming up next, the second of the bronze medal contests in the plus 100 kilo category. Marty Pumalainen of Finland goes up against Shokru Baktiorov of Uzbekistan. It'll be Pumalainen in the white judogi, judogi, back to Yorov in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Roberta Correa of Chile. These two have not met previously. There's Pumalainen. Pumalainen, I think, uh, he's showed great promise on his uh, kind of build-up last year and a half uh, certainly the last 18 months and uh, just it's always there round about in the medals and threatens to uh, do a lot better and I think uh, as he comes through he will get better I hope you you're going to understand what I'm going to say here which is he's he's not lacking in self-confidence <laughs> no he's not term that we um, use in English quite a lot. You've got you've got to back yourself. He certainly does. No, no, he does that. Yes, he does. Well, he broke that away. That's a shido for Pumalayan. Gonna have to go in at some stage. He has got a, a drop C and Aggie. Pomalainen. He goes right and left actually. Of has uh, just taking, just snapping that uh, grip off of Pomalainen and Pomalainen now looking for the opportunity in groundwork, but uh, he needs to go a little bit faster in and, and gain some momentum in order to take him over. Now, then, he's got him on his back now. If he can tie up this top half here, this could be all over. Just needs the confidence to do it. Now he's going to bring up, uh, as soon as he's tied up top half, he'll yep. bring up that right leg to try and get it out, but uh, it's not going to be. He was working away at yeah, it, wasn't it was, he? But yeah. The idea was there. Yeah. Physically strong opponent, back to Yorov. Is it Sernagi? He's come off the wrong side, not for me. Well, it's uh, landed with uh, both elbows down and uh, gets a score for it. Uh, let's just have a look. Yeah, like you say, comes off the 
opposite side there. It's not everybody's favourite, is it, yeah. that landing? But uh, anyway, at the I mean, moment it scores. I mean, one hand was down from the technique. The other, he comes and lands. And at that point, he's got both hands supporting. So I guess, yes, <laughs> one was by accident. The other was by design. So, yeah. This is where he could score here. He's uh, mm. looking, this is twice now he's done this. Just needs to be really, really uh, confident with it. Tie up that uh, arm there, come across to the other side, and that foot will come out. I think if he goes really hard onto the head. On to, to the top half yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. But he's already on the leg. Yeah. And he hasn't got the top half He needs to sorted, come up yeah. to the top half. Yeah. Agreed. Give Absolutely it a little agreed. bit of welly. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah. then take the leg out. Nothing worse than when you're underneath there and somebody's squeezing onto your head. Yeah, because you then begin to concentrate well, yeah, on that just, top it's part. It's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. And especially uh, with all the lights there up above, that's a beautiful scene. Yeah. Now then, that might just be the Wazari Awazeti upon, and uh, it's all over. Kalainen has done enough. <laughs> Yeah, another medal for Finland. Now then, oh, he has to have, have a look, look at it. Yeah. So uh, it'll be a bit of a shame if he doesn't get this landing and he gets the other one. Well, we need to see it from the other side, don't we? Uh, hopefully, this will come from the other side and uh, we'll get a clear look. No, nope, it's not a score. Uh, so that didn't make uh, the, the uh, landing. They'll, they'll knock that off because uh, the side wasn't on. Uh, in contact with the uh, with the mat, so they've uh, knocked it off there. So all the celebrations uh, can go on hold. And now he's got a Wazari <laughs> back, and he's straight on top of him. <laughs> How the tides can change! It's unbelievable. Well, and that was a score, wasn't it? Look at that. Makikomi there. Big takes old him, style. Yeah. Yeah. And he's gone oh, again. And he's finished it. <laughs> he's finished it. So Polainen here has gone from winning it. And within uh, 30 seconds, he's lost it. Wow. Two massive techniques there. But to Yorov, credit to him. Does the business. <laughs> Well, how to win it and lose it, all within about 30 seconds. Talk about dramatic. It's just as well that Pumalainen didn't, didn't over-celebrate. <laughs> but it was enough, wasn't it? I mean, even, the, even in the crowd, they were yeah. laughing at him because uh, he was uh, celebrating and giving it the big one. But, uh, oh, wow. Those two techniques that uh, Bakhtiyarov uh, just did were two... Uh, really big scores well we're gonna have another look at this and uh, just see how it unfolded here's the uh, score and uh, the first score that is and here's the second one this time for uh, back to Yorov. This Koso the, is uh, really yeah, nice. Yeah, really lovely uh, score for the uh, to finish it off. Shokru, back to Yorov, planting him in the end. Really powerful finish. Yeah. So all over and uh, well. How to win, how to lose, all within a 20 second period of time. Good credit to him though, he went up there and he said well done. We come now to the final of the plus 100 kilo category for men. Jelle Snipper of the Netherlands goes up against Teddy Renner of France. If we Snipper in the white Jadoki, Renner in blue, that's the route to the final. I can't remember these two ever having had a head-to-head. -head. 
The referee in the middle for this one is Raul Camacho of Spain. Full concentration there from Raul and he'll make a good job of this. He'll control this match. Uh, credit to this man here, Joel Snipe, having an absolute uh, brilliant day. Got his work cut out though here. The 10 time world champion, two time Olympic champion, four time Olympic medalist on the individuals, that is, as well as uh, team gold. Wow, he is one of the greatest. And uh, here he is again in a major final. Well, when Teddy Rinner was winning his first world title. Yellow, yellow snippy was, um, he hadn't even started out of in cadets yet. <laughs> no, I know. It's incredible, isn't it? So credit uh, to the big man. But uh, he is uh, just a head and shoulders above everybody else, isn't he? Snip will uh, have to uh, keep moving. I think he realises that. Nothing to lose. Big left arm there. He's going to give a Shido away if he's not careful. Yeah. Oh, it's all over. Massive technique from Teddy Renner, and uh, he made easy work of that, didn't he? Wow. Teddy Renner on great form today, I have to say. Did the business against all the heavyweights yet again. And uh, you've got to go, well, two years to the next Olympic Games. Who could doubt it? He has made it look. It, it it will be disparaging to his opponents if I, if I say he's made it look easy. So I'm not. <laughs> exactly. I'm not going to say that. But it did look um, as if uh, he just had a, a pretty good run through, didn't it? And uh, wow, what a great run out for him. Great Teddy Renner. Just uh, absolutely did the business in this heavyweight division. And a massive technique there just to polish it all off. Well, the really nice thing for those who have stayed, and a lot of people have stayed, more so than, than would be normal in the usual heavyweights. They've all, you know, hot-footed and out of the venue by now. But they, they can now say, all the youngsters there, I saw Teddy Rinnett. And, uh, yeah, and on great form. Yeah. You know, it's uh, so good to see him on such good form. Yeah, he didn't drag around, did he? He banged people over. And uh, changing the direction as well. You know, his Kumakata was as strong as normal, as, as always. And uh, that's the uh, most dominant I've seen him for a yeah. long time. And he's it's, still there after it's, all this time. Especially the win against Gela Zalashvili. And I think that took the steam out of um, Zalashvili. He wasn't the same after that. I agree. Look at that. But that Massive could have been right. Rene any time during his career. Yeah. So big Ashigaruma, or uh, was it Harai? Big Harai, let's call it Harai. Yeah. Harai Goshi there and uh, thunders him over there. Just brilliant. Had the dominant grip and then full commitment there. And he knew, didn't he? That was it. The other thing, Neil, is that, you know, Yellow's not 21, or he's not a 19-year-old or something. You know, he's not a kid. No, I think uh, he was uh, a little bit in awe as he came out there. Of course you would be, but um, wow, what a performance there. And what a way to finish this third day of competition here in Hungary. Well, that was an introduction to the life in the uh, Grand Slam lane, if you like, for Yellow Snipper. <laughs> I think uh, he's got his family in there as well. How nice for them to see it as well, you know, because uh, that doesn't always happen, does it? Right, we come now to the awarding ceremony for women in the 
plus 78 kilo category. The medals are being presented by the Vice President of the International Judo Federation and President of the Pan American Judo Confederation, Mr. Carlos Zegara. First of the bronze medals goes to Su Xin of the Republic of China. There's a bronze medal also for Raz Hershko of Israel. Silver medal goes to Idalis Ortiz of Cuba. Gold medal goes to Tomita Wakaba of Japan. National Anthem of Japan. Hershko and Sue were the bronze medal winners. It was Ortiz who picked up the silver. And Tomita who walked away with the gold medal. We've got one more awarding ceremony to bring for you. And then Neil will give you a roundup of the final medal set. Well, but before that, We've got a highlights package.
come now to the awarding ceremony for men in the plus 100 kilo category. Medals are being presented by the General Treasurer of the International Judo Federation, Mr. Nasser Al Tamimi. The first of the bronze medals goes to Shoku Bakhtiyorov of Uzbekistan. There's a bronze medal also for Magomed Omarov of the United Arab Emirates. Silver medal goes to Jelle Snipper of the Netherlands. The gold medal goes to Teddy Riner of France. And there's a real big chair in the venue for him. Yeah, no, and that's not just from the uh, crowd, it's from everybody here. Yeah. I mean, everybody appreciates that uh, what he's doing here is just uh, breathtaking. There's that term that you hear, the goat. Yes. The greatest of all time. Yeah, no, he has uh, <laughs> certainly, uh, when it comes to winning, this man is uh, the real deal. Eight Grand Slams, seven Grand Slam gold medals. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, truly an amazing record that this man has. I mean, uh, it's incredible uh, to think that he's still in there. He's going to go for his fifth Olympic Games. And uh, who could beat him? <laughs> Back to Yorov, Magomed Omarov with a bronze medal winner, Snipper. It was who picked up the silver, it was Rene, who memorably, for all the crowd here, picks up the gold medal. Here's Neil. Well, what can you say? It's just uh, what an, a way to end uh, yet another great Grand Slam tournament. We've had three days of absolutely amazing judo. And it's uh, been a little bit different as well. We've seen good technique on the first day. We saw uh, good tactics on the second day. We saw some amazing matchups all the way through the three days. And we finished there with one of the greatest of all times. Japan were magnificent, I have to say. And uh, you can see that there. Eight gold medals, one bronze medal there for Japan. Quite clearly superior in this tournament. Italy, one gold, two silver, one bronze. They came second. Brazil third with a gold, silver silver and bronze. Uh, Azerbaijan uh, next with a gold, silver and a bronze. France now with a gold of course and a bronze medal there in fifth place. Hungary with a, a gold, Belgium with a gold and then of course you've got Georgia with three silvers. Uh, next was Israel with uh, silver, five bronzes. Cuba, silver, two bronzes. Uh, Spain, silver. Uh, Uzbekistan silvers, uh, Germany silver, 
Poland silver, uh, Netherlands silver, and then a couple of bronzes there for Mongolia, down uh, United Amer uh, Arab Emirates are there as well, the People's Republic of China with the bronze medal, and the other bronzes there for Canada, United States of America, Venezuela, Croatia, Puerto Rico. Wow, oh, got all the medals out there. What an event it's been. Uh, we've got more great judo uh, back in Zagreb uh, just a week's time. Uh, so Sheldon and I will be back and uh, we're looking forward to it. More great judo action. Until then, from Sheldon and I, it's goodbye for now.